Welcome to another edition of Mark's Madness, joined as always by Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, week nine in the books. The playoff picture is coming into focus. Just counted, we've got 15 teams. That's amazing. Who have already clinched yeah. a spot and headed and into week 10. We're going to get more. We're going to get more. You know, there's a lot of them on the bubble there, winning in kind of thing, and some others that might get some help and get in there. So, as always, we've got lots of teams to follow in the postseason. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. One team that we're going to get to follow this year in the postseason that we've never gotten to follow before is Fort Recovery, and uh -huh. that's because it's their first ever appearance in the postseason yeah. in program history, and they did it with a dramatic victory yeah. over St. Henry. We're going to take a look at a couple of plays yeah. from that game in just a short bit. But how about the Indians and Brent Niekamp? Well, that's just awesome, especially to get into the playoffs and clinch with one week to go. Usually, you know, when you haven't been in there for a while and you're looking for that first one, you get in by the skin of your teeth. But no, they're, they've clinched. Now they're looking for a better seed, uh, potentially a home game. Not an easy task. They got Versailles coming up, and Versailles got a little bit to play for it. Five and four, they're number 12. Like, well, need a lot of help. But nonetheless, that'll be a tough game for Fort Recovery. No time to rest before the playoffs, that's for sure. Yeah, Fort Recovery sitting at number four in their region right now. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. Marion Roll, they have mm -hmm. their lone team in our area that has clinched the one seed, I yeah. believe. Yep, yeah, that's right. Wapakoneta yeah. can still get it, uh, I think, mm -hmm. uh, with a win. Yep, yeah. Uh, we've got three teams that have clinched home. Uh, Wapak has the potential to get a one, but Marion Local's already got that baby sewed up. Okay, and Coldwater yeah. also another big win, and, yep. and they continue to roll. and looking and for, Looking for that home game as well. Uh, and, you know, they've got New Bremen. New Bremen hasn't had a win. Boy, it'd make their year if they could upset the Cavaliers right now. But I got a feeling that uh, as time tested and playoff tested as the Cavaliers are, they're not going to let that happen to them in Week 10. So Week 10 coming up, another huge game in the NWC. Mm -hmm. We've got Spencerville against Delphus Jefferson with a league title on the line. That's right. And Spencerville's not even guaranteed a playoff spot at this point. How did that happen? That's right. And Jefferson, you know, they could be 8-2 and two and not get into the playoffs, so they, they've got to scrape for everything they can get. A lot of points to be had here either way. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's uh, the brawl for it all right down to the end. You know, league championship, playoffs on the line. It's a big, big game with a rival, rivalry right down the road. It's a game you'll be able to see on WOSN Saturday. The game will be played on Saturday as well, but we'll be airing it Saturday at 11 p.m., so you want to see how that one turns out. Mm -hmm. And Crestview lost last week in the NWC. Yeah. Did that surprise you? Yeah, it did, uh, only because, um, you know, they had gotten the big win the week before, and, and they had a lot to play for. Not that they didn't play hard, but, but I think a lot of people have underestimated Grove. You know, Coach Schaefer knows they, they're pretty good, and they're in the playoffs they're too. They're in. Crestview you know? and Grove are both in. So, yeah, they didn't get upset by some poor team. They went up there and got, got upset or beat by a team that's very, very good. Uh, I think, you know, it's one of those games you play 10 times, you know, Crestview may win the majority of them, but not that night. The Grove Bulldogs got them. Grove Bulldogs got them, and it, it cost the Knights a chance at the league title now, which That's will be right. decided between Spencerville and Jefferson. Yeah, about two the, losses, they're out of the picture. Two losses, they're out. How about the BVC? I mean, it's, it's always confusing when I talk about the BVC <laughs> now to the two divisions. Yeah. But we do know that Macomb and Liberty Benton square off this week, week 10. And if Liberty Benton wins, they claim the Blanchard division. Right. That's right, because they will have no losses. But if Macomb upsets them and Arlington wins, we got a three-way tie in that division. On the other side, we got Van Buren playing PG. PG's got one loss. Van Buren's undefeated. So that's for that division championship. Isn't it great when it comes down to week 10 and you're playing for league championships against each other? As a high I school player awesome. and coach, I mean, you can't get more exciting than that. What and more fans, do you want? That's right. Yeah. What more do you want than to be playing for something really important the last game of the season? And a lot of these teams are. Well, speaking of Van Buren, the league title is definitely important to them, but mm -hmm. they are, they don't control their own destiny, but they can get into the playoffs. And just mm -hmm. like Fort Recovery, it would be their first ever playoff mm -hmm. appearance in program history. So, so much on the line That's in that right. game for Van They're going to need a little help, but if they win, PG's going to give them some points. So they could pop up there and look pretty good for getting into the playoffs. So, yeah, I got a lot to play for. You know, it's do or die for a lot of these teams. Spoke about Wap Wapakoneta a minute ago. They've clinched at least a share of the Western Buckeye League. They're 9-0. They've mm -hmm. looked great all season. Yep. And they've clinched a home game as well. Mm -hmm. Kenton is in. So who's going to go deeper in the playoffs, Wapak or Kenton? It's a tough question because, with, yeah. you know, Kenton's pedigree, and, and but Wapak hasn't done anything at all this season to make us think they're, they're not going deep. That's right. And, you know, like in all those big games and other quality opponents, it comes down to penalties, turnovers, and big plays and injuries this time of year. But the thing that helps Kenton in the playoffs is they play – up in the WBL division-wise and then drop down in the, in the tournament. Right. So they're playing against teams. I know in the first couple of rounds the last several years, they've played teams that had no business being on the field with them from other areas, you know. 
And that might be the case. So I guess right off the top, if I had to answer that question, I'd say Kenton has a good chance of going deep because they will play lesser competition, at least in the early round. But, you know, I think both those teams, you know, you think of Kenton is waiting for Walpock to stumble, get a share of that WBL. Walpock plays Shawnee. Kenton plays Defiance. Right. You would think both those teams are going to win those games. Yeah, we look for Ws out of them in Week 10. Mm -hmm. Lima Senior stumbled. Mm -hmm. Their first yeah. loss. You were there. You called it. Yeah, and I was. Watching that game back, everything started great. Mm -hmm. They made the fourth down conversion on their possession and scored yeah, the gamble. touchdown. Yeah. And then they stopped Toledo Central Catholic on fourth down in their mm -hmm. opening possession, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And then from there, the Irish just rolled. And if some adversity yeah. for Lima Senior. But is this a That's good right. thing? Um, we'll find out a lot about them. Coach Fell found out a lot about his guys in the locker room, not only at halftime. And I thought they responded pretty well at halftime. It was ugly. That first half, I mean, you take them in, they couldn't get in the locker Sidewalk. room fast enough, you right. know, but they came out, they competed, they scored, they made a game of it, got it to two possessions twice or two scores twice, just couldn't get over the hump. So I think he found out a little bit about his guys right there, but then to go in and how are you going to recover and then get on a bus and drive, how many hours is it, to Whitmer and play another really good team. Going to find out a lot about the Spartans and Coach Fell, his toughest job all year is to get those guys back mentally so they can go up and play a very good team right. physically. Well, they're already in the playoffs. They still mm -hmm. can get a home game. Mm -hmm. So given how last season ended, and remember we, they were sitting with a good chance and then kind of fell off at the end, mm -hmm. they're already in. And yep. I think this is maybe could be a good thing in that they, this group hasn't faced anything like that yet. Yep. They rolled That's through true. Finley. That's true. So we'll yep. get it out of the way now when the only thing at stake was really a, a league title, right. and we'll see how far they can go into the postseason. Yeah, Toledo Central Catholic is probably not going to lose their last game. They play a bottom dweller. Uh, so, you, you know, right now you're just going up there to try to get a little momentum, going to the playoffs, get nine wins. Not many teams in the state can say that. Yep. And just figuring out where they came from two years ago, 0-10, 5-5, ooh, 9-1 looks pretty good. A home game at Spartan Stadium would be uh, pretty exciting. So it we'll sure see if they would. can lock that down this week. It's time for a break here on Mark's Madness. When we return, we're going to break down a couple of plays in that crazy finish for Recovery St. Henry that helped the Indians earn their first ever playoff berth. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Mark's Madness, and it's time to break down a play or a couple of plays as mm -hmm. we usually do. And in this case, we've got four great plays for you, and they help decide the Fort Recovery St. Henry game from last Friday night. Pick it up here, end of the first half. Well, you're just trying to throw it down there and let pass interference or something good happen. He gets outside the pocket. Good job sealing the end by the lineman. He throws it up in the end zone, and his guy goes up high and gets it. I think that's Stom in the knee camp. Right before half, what a lift this is. You can see him looking back to make sure nobody's coming so he can really wind up and crank it. And he throws that thing about 50 yards. I think they got credit for 44-yard touchdown pass. He throws it about halfway into the end zone. And just a great catch, no doubter, inbounds for a touchdown. So that gives St. Henry the lead at the half. But here they're trailing with a minute and a half to go. Well, you throw out in the flat and, gee, he breaks three tackles and gets in the end zone. This is Pringer. Stallman again threw it out there. I think just trying to gain some yards. Really, it wasn't looking for a touchdown pass. You see there, the guy outside's going deep. The inside guy runs the flat. Both guys come up to tackle him, and he just breaks tackles. I mean, that's not overrun, and he breaks another tackle there and gets into the end zone. So that's a huge play. Pringer breaking tackles, getting in the end zone. So 26-25 after the failed two-point conversion. Fort recovery with an answer, though. Check this out, under a minute to go. And just handing it off. It's not like they're in panic mode or anything. And you're going to see the replay. This is just zone blocking. This isn't a trap or anything fancy. Just hand it off. They fake a little screen out here with the receivers. The linebackers kind of take off out wide, opens up the middle. And then he just puts a move on the DB right there. And Cole Hall goes 52 yards with 41 seconds left to give themselves a lead. So remember that Hail Mary from the end of the first half. St. Harry <laughs> going to try to do it again here. Down five, final play of the game. Well, Stalman stays in the pocket this time, but again, puts a big rainbow down there. His guy catches it. He caught was it. Was he in? He thought he was. He's trying to talk the official into it, but he wasn't. And we slowed it down and took a look, and his feet were on the line out of bounds. Good call by the official, but an exciting, exciting finish. How about that? The Hail yeah. Mary almost works yeah. twice yeah. in a row for St. Henry. The, the first time was successful, the second yeah. time. And, of course, just out of bounds. Ran out of field. And Fort Recovery <laughs> gets the win. What a play. What a game. Great work again by our cameraman. I believe it was Kyle Pullman on that one. 
So time for another break here on Mark's Madness. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some of those Week 10 games and, and, and figure out the rest of the playoff picture for you. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, third and final down here on Mark's Madness. And Mark, so as we enter week 10, remember we talked week one, we were trying to figure out what was going to happen, who were going to be the surprises, who, were, who was going to have a good year. Well, now we know the answer. So I ask you now on week 10, who is your biggest surprise of the season? What team? Well, well I want to keep it positive because there were some teams that looked to have a really good year and didn't. So we won't go there. But we'll look at the teams that maybe weren't expecting a good year or had even a better year than you expected. And you gotta, you got to go with Fort Recovery. I mean, you know, they've never been in the playoffs before. Last year, 3-7. and seven. Right now, they're sitting at 6-3, and three, clinched the playoffs, and may end up 7-3. and three. That's a complete reversal. 3-7-7-3. Oh, yeah, they three. play in the MAC, by the and, way. And they play in the MAC. That's right. You don't just sneak up on those teams. So that's a big surprise. And then you got to go with the Spartans. I mean, 5-5 five and five last year, everybody was all thrilled. Now they got eight wins already, and they're scoring over 50 points a game against some pretty good competition. Uh, and doing it in dramatic fashion there in the playoffs too. So those are my two biggest surprises this year. Two great stories of the yeah. 2014 high school it football sure season. Yep. We touched on a lot of the league titles. Just wanted mm -hmm. to mention the NWCC. Fort Warmie still has a chance. Yep. Layman Catholic has clinched at least a share, but they, mm -hmm. the Cavs will need to lose for Warmie to... Uh, That's right. One win against uh, undefeated. And it, it looks like, you know... Layman Catholic They're not will. going to, but, yeah. you know, you never know. you got to go out and play on Friday night. So. Layman Catholic is also two in their region, I believe, behind mm -hmm. Marion, who has clinched the number one seed. Right. And we've got four winning in games. This is it. Mm -hmm. We talked about it a little mm -hmm. bit. This is what you want, this though. This is exciting. Fort Warmie is one of those teams. Mm -hmm. They win, and they get into the playoffs. Yeah. Pandora Gilbella also. Yeah. Yeah. Delphi St. John's, Spencerville. All those teams yeah. win and in. Yeah. Who do you think has got the best chance? Well, n nobody's playing you know, yeah, they're all tough liver. games. They're all I tough mean, games. That's the playing, thing, yeah. They're playing really good teams. Uh, you know, I, I think Fort Lormie's got the best chance of, of uh, getting that win. For, you know, the others all have a chance to win, but yeah. they're a really good competition, too. So, uh, but it, it, isn't that what you want? I mean, you don't have to motivate your guys. There's no speeches in pregame this week, man. Just go play. This is We're why trying to get in the playoffs, guys. Let's go. If you yeah. can't get excited about that, you don't have a pulse, you know. Back in August, and you're out there in the hot summer days, and, and this is the re this is why you do it all. That's right. For, for That's nights right. like Friday night. A lot of fun for those. So teams. that leads us into our week ten games. What, what are you looking at? Well, our, our TV games are great, you know, and you're going to run those down. But uh, you know, there's a couple others. Liberty Benton Macomb up in there is going to decide that that Blanchard uh, division of that BVC. Uh, Lima Senior at Whitmer, you know, a lot riding on there locally. Um, you know, LCC and Ada is a very interesting game for me. Ada At can Ada, still get in. Yeah, and, and Ada's got a, a, that hope. They're going to get a lot of points if they beat LCC. LCC's number two right now. They're trying to keep 20. a good seed. Uh, you know, so uh, that's a big game. And then some of our TV games are just phenomenal. We've got great games coming up. DSJ, Marion Local is a TV game. You can yep. see that Friday. That kicks off our broadcast schedule. Five games this week. And Delphi St. John's needs a win to get in. Tough yeah. task over Tough Marion task, Local, yeah. but it can be done. And we saw the run that they went on in the postseason last year, so no one's counting them out. Yeah, right now all i got to do is get in. Right. You know? Salina Elida will be the game following the 75-minute sports report on WTLW. Then a Saturday triple header. Get ready for this. Van Buren, Pandora, Gilbo, that big one that we know Van Buren. Valley, Valley Division Championship. Can get in. They need a little help still. Don't control their own destiny, but mm -hmm. they got a win to get in. PG also needs to win. Versailles Fort Recovery. You can watch the Indians in their first game after clinching uh -huh. Saturday at 9. Yeah, and see then, how they react. Yeah, that, that they, be, They've never experienced it right. before. And then maybe they're yeah. looking ahead to week 11 already. Yeah, Who maybe. knows? Yeah. And then we'll close out our Saturday broadcast schedule with that big one, Spencerville Jefferson, yeah. and that'll air at 11 p.m. It'll be, like I said, played on Saturday night. You can see it right here at 11 on WOSN. So that's going to do it for Mark's Madness. Thanks, Mark, as always, and can't wait to get out there week 10. Enjoy it. Have a good night.